in the process of testing of hypothesis, once we have stated the null hypothesis, we have determined the level of significance, we have defined the test statistics, the next thing that is very important is the decision rule. But before we talk about the decision rule, it's very important that we understand the concept of one tail test and two tail test. One and two tail tests are ways to identify the relationship between the statistical variables. For checking the relationship between variables in a single direction, that could be in the right direction or left, we use a one-tailed test. On the other hand, a two-tailed test is used for checking whether the relationship between variables are in any of the direction. That could either be left or right. So, talking about one-tailed test, a one-tailed test is based on a unidirectional hypothesis where the area of rejection, which is also called region of rejection, is on only one side of the sampling distribution. It determines whether a particular population parameter is larger or smaller than the predefined parameter. And here you can observe in the figures, in the figure that is on our right, it's a one-tailed test there the shaded region is on the right, which is called right-tailed test. On the left side, we have a left-tailed test, where we will be looking at the value that is smaller than the predefined parameter. But in both the forms of the test, our focus is only on one tail, either on the smaller tail, lower tail, or on the upper tail that is right tail. A two-tail test, on the other hand, is, is, is also called a non-directional hypothesis. It is made when our interest is in checking whether the sample is greater or less than a range of values. Here, you will notice for the same test, we will have right tail shaded and the left tail shaded at the same time. And the area under the right tail is the same as area under the left tail. This can only happen if the distribution is symmetric, but if it's not, that could be different. Determination of one tail test and two tail test is fairly dependent upon the sign that we see in the alternative hypothesis. Let's assume the first one, when the null hypothesis says that the average value that is mu is greater than some predefined value of the population parameter. Whereas the alternative hypothesis, mu is less than the value. Here, we can notice in the alternative hypothesis, the value mu is less than. So when you see a less than sign, it means we are talking about a smaller tail or a left tail. That a value of the mean is lesser than or is smaller to the predefined population value. Hence, we call it a left-tailed test. Similarly, if our null hypothesis is mu less than equals to certain predefined value of the population parameter against the alternative hypothesis that mu is greater than that predefined value. If we see a greater sign in the alternative hypothesis, we are talking about the, lar the value to be larger than the predefined value. And if our interest is in looking at a value to be larger than the predefined value, we'll talk about the right-tailed test. Both the left-tailed test separately and right-tailed test separately are considered as one-tailed test. On the other hand, if we are null hypothesis, H0 that says that mu is equals to that predefined value, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that mu is not equals to that predefined value. Comparing it with earlier hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, we will notice that in the first one, average was only showing less than sign, which was only talking about one tail, that is the lesser tail. The second one, the alternative hypothesis, the average was greater than the predefined value, which was showing a greater sign, which was showing the greater tail, right tail. But in the third hypothesis, where you see in the alternative hypothesis, mu is not equals 
to that predefined value. When mu is not equals to, it can either be lesser or it can be greater. Here, when we are not determined to talk about one tail, we can either talk about the greater or lesser. We talk about two-tailed test. So it's the alternative hypothesis that help, help us determine whether the test is one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. Here's the difference between one-tailed and two-tailed test. A one-tailed test is a test of any statistical hypothesis where the alternative hypothesis is one tail, either right-tailed or left-tailed. So on the other hand, a test of statistical hypothesis where the alternative hypothesis is two-tailed will be a two-tailed test. For one-tailed, we use either greater sign or less than sign for the alternative hypothesis. But in a two-tailed test, we use not equal sign for the alternative hypothesis. In one-tailed test, when the alternative hypothesis specifies a direction, then we use a one-tailed test. But if no direction is given, then we will use a two-tailed test. Critical region lies entirely on the either the right side or the left side of the sampling distribution. If the one-tailed test is right-tailed test, the critical region will also lie on the right tail. And if our one-tailed test is left-tailed test, then the critical region will lie on the left side of the sampling distribution. On the other hand, in a two-tailed test, critical region is given by the portion of the area lying in both of the tails of the probability curve for the test statistic. In one-tailed test, rejection region is either from the left side or the right side of the sampling distribution, whereas in the two-tailed test, the rejection region is from both sides, left and right of the sampling distribution. In one-tailed test, it checks the relationship between the variable in a single direction, whereas in a two-tailed test, it checks the relationship between the variable in any direction. It is used to check whether the one mean is different from another mean or not, whereas two-tailed test, it is used to check whether the two means different from one another or not. So in the testing of hypothesis, we make use of two approaches when we are making our decision. First, well, first is critical value approach, and the second is p-value approach. We're going to talk both of them. Firstly, we need to know what critical region is. The region where the true null hypothesis is, re is rejected is called critical region. Critical region are ranges of the distribution where the values represent statistically significant result. We define the size and location of the critical region by specifying both the significance level and whether the test is one-tailed or a two-tailed test. In the figure given below, it talks about two-tailed test, where we have the critical region, that is shaded region, on the right tail. At the same time, we have shaded region on the left tail, which is represented by alpha by two. And significance level alpha is, is, uh, is used to determine the cutoff point that where this cutoff point for this shaded region should be placed. Other than critical region, we have the region that's stated by one minus alpha. It's the confidence region, which is also called acceptance region. A critical region, specifically the four steps involved in using the critical value approach to conducting any hypothesis. First of all, we specify the null and alternative hypothesis. Secondly, using the sample data and assuming the null hypothesis is true, we calculate the value of the test statistic to conduct the hypothesis test for the population mean mu. We use the t-test, which follows a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And likewise, for each other test, depending upon the distribution that's testing, that test statistics follow, we update the distribution associated to it. Thirdly, we determine the critical value by finding the value of the known distribution of the test statistic, such that the probability of making a type 1 error which is denoted by a Greek letter called alpha. And it's called the significance level of the test. If alpha is small, typically 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0 0.10. That, that corresponds to 1% level of significance, 5% level of significance, or 10% level of significance. Using this information, we compare the test statistic to the critical value. If the test statistics is more extreme in the direction of the alternative than the critical value, 
we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. But if the test statistics is less extreme than the critical value, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Another important approach in the process of decision making is approach using p-value. A p-value is the probability that the computed value of a test statistic is at least as extreme as a specified value of the test statistic when the null hypothesis is true. Thus, a p-value is the smallest value of alpha for which we can reject the null hypothesis. It's important to understand that the p-value and significance level help us to decide whether or not we should reject our null hypothesis, that is H0, in favor of the alternative hypothesis, that is HA. These values help us measure the comparability between the data, estimates, and the null hypothesis. Here we assume that the null hypothesis is true. The p-value is the probability of observing a sample mean that is as or more extreme than the observed. The question comes at how to compute the p-value for each type of test. Here, the step one includes that we first compute the test statistic. If it's coming from z-test, we use z-statistics. If we are performing t-test, we compute it using t-statistic. If we are performing some other test that talks about the chi-square or f distributions, we follow the respective test statistic. Once we have computed our test statistic, as a second step, we need to decide whether we are performing a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test. And if it's a one-tailed test, whether it is a right-tailed test or it is a left-tailed test. If it's a two-tailed test, the p-value is computed as a probability z is less than minus z0 modulus or z is greater than z mod. We can also calculate it equals to two times probability of z greater than z0 absolute. But if it's a one-tailed test, if it's a right-tailed, p-value will be probability of z greater than z0. And if it's a left-tailed test, it's probability uh, z less than z0. Where z0 is the calculated value of the test statistic. Here are some misconceptions regarding p-value. The p-value is not the probability of falsely rejecting the null hypothesis. This error is a version of a so-called prosecutor's fallacy. The p-value is not the probability that a replicating experiment would not yield the same conclusion. And 1 minus p-value is not the probability of alternative hypothesis being true. The significance level of the test is not determined by the p-value. It is decided before any data is collected. If p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, we may reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that it is true.